Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and podcast. My name is Peter Barber. I'm primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and a bass vocalist. And about a week ago, I had the immense pleasure and joy of speaking with who I and many people consider to be the world's greatest basso profundo singer. I mean, I really, I sound like a field mouse next to this guy. His name is Glenn Miller. He's performed all over the world in many of the world's greatest choral and chamber ensembles. He's a deep lover of music. He does everything he can to serve the music. And we talk about his life, his career, his amazing and, you know, one in a billion voice, his approach to his technique, his lifestyle, his favorite performances, and so many more interesting topics. I can't even express how much of an honor and a pleasure it was to chat with him. I know you guys are going to love this interview, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. See ya. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining on the channel and the podcast, wherever you are watching or listening. Here we have the great Glenn Miller, who I am so excited to speak to and have on the channel. I've been an absolutely enormous fan of his work for so long. And I'm going to I'm going to quickly pass the baton to him and let him give a little elevator pitch as to who he is and uh, what he does for a living. And then we'll we'll go into all the details later. Well, my name is Glenn Miller and um, I've been I'm a basso profundo slash octavist and um, I I, my my focus has been on essentially choral work, particularly music of the Orthodox tradition, but not exclusive to that. Um, and um, I sing notes off the staff, but I also go way up the staff too. So I, and that's been an interesting thing. I've got you know, as I, you know, it's interesting how your voice evolves, and even in the past couple of years um i've found that my top has opened up a bit differently awesome and, um, <laughs> so you know i don't know uh, you know you, 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 your voice changes and grows so um but i've been doing this for a long time i've kind of been known for um kind of um well just kind of what i've been doing and i um, mean it started um i was a very high boy soprano and um, when i was 14 the the floor dropped out and um, I sang a top C at eighth grade graduation, and I sang a low E flat my, my ninth grade year. So, oh my goodness! You know, and you know, you you know, as your voice is forming, you know, you don't lose the top for a while. You know, you kind of have, you know, you kind of have two voices going. And I was able to keep that going through high school, but then gradually, you know, I wasn't working it, and it kind of disappeared. So, so what and was I sing above middle C? You know. Yeah. Well, yeah. that, that that not singing above middle C is is the struggle of most young basses. I feel like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I was told um, there was a choral, a, a great choral director in the middle of the 20th century, Howard Swan. He came. Like, I'm a graduate of Westminster Choir College, and um, he would come and um, teach in the summer session and different perspectives on choral singing and the different schools of choral directing. And he told me that. Um, well, first he said. Um, I've only heard one person that's had a passaggio as low as yours, yeah, which is like F sharp. You know? Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then he said it's not going to be until I was like twenty one, then twenty two, and he said um, it's not going to be until you're 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 into your thirties that things are going to start to happen. You know that you know, and that's when I sang for Robert Shaw for the first time. Okay, and is is that what led to that the really famous recording you did of "Do Not Reject yeah. Me"? Yes, phenomenal. So, how did that all how did that all transpire? You you sing for Robert Shaw, and he's like, "We got to get this guy." On well, a it was major kind of recording. interesting. I I after that was that was after I went to grad school, and I went to grad school as a choral conductor. And oh, okay, uh, yeah, and um, and then I decided, and I was, and as a church musician too, but but my degree was in conducting. And I, um, after I finished that, I wanted to go to, I wanted to explore um, choral, well, I couldn't decide if I wanted to be a singer or a, or a choir director, um, but I got bit by the um, the choral scene in England. 
And I wanted to go to King's College on Christmas Eve once before I retired. <laughs> and I figured I couldn't do that with a church job. So I went and I spent six months in Europe. And I also was going to do some intensive language work. Um, and But I only I only did a third of that. Because, <laughs> I, I, you know, French and I, I love French, but I, I, that's just not my my area. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, you know. Uh, my grad school voice teacher was, I don't know, he was trying to make me into a lyric baritone and was having me sing Pool Link and <laughs> Oh no, 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 no not, for, not, not for your voice. No, no, okay. no. <laughs> um so but so I missed the auditions for the Summer Institute for Shaw. I was I was out for six months. And then I got back and I knew the man who was the um the director of the Shaw Institute. Um he had been the dean at the choir college when I was there. And also the associate um, through, through the organist world. And Mr. Shaw was saying, I'm not happy with the bass section. You know, he could be real gruff. Um, <laughs> and, they, and, and the two of them looked at each other and he said, well, where's Glenn? You know? <laughs> so they found yeah. me, called me and said, um, don't worry about the, you know, singing the audition arias or any of that. Um, just sing from the middle of your range down to the bottom, you know, and, um, then I thought, but I, but I did the audition arias anyway, cause I thought that would, it would have been kind of obnoxious not to, you know, <laughs> and that's what I did. And then I got in and went to France and incredible choir. Oh, it was just, and you know, that, that recording is a testimony to that. Absolutely. And just sing for Shaw. And he heard everyone. I went when we got there. That was because he would assign us all a number within the section from low to high. And that's how he would would deal with balance issues. Um, and so I was like scared to death because it was Robert Shaw, you know. So I went <laughs> to my audition and he starts, he's sitting at the piano playing the notes. I'm doing five tone scales, starting kind of mid-range and worked his way, worked our way down. And and I was like, just keep your focus, you know, because this is the make or break moment. And um, as I got lower and lower, he started to laugh. And we got to yeah. the B flat, which is the money note in movement five, yeah. you know. And then he got up and said, Brother Miller, we can now do the piece. <laughs> yeah. And um, and then, um, and he would always kind of look at me when low notes would happen and just like, kind of gesture, <laughs> just kind of gesture, just let it happen, Brother Miller. And um, so that's how that all start that happened, you know. And um, but I still couldn't sing much above a middle C, <laughs> you know. I mean, um, and um, when you've got the B flat one, you don't need the middle all, C know. really. <laughs> but now you know there's you know I, I, um, you know my I, that piece has really been the gauge for me for my vocal development and maturation and having done it so many times. You know, and and or leaving having be on, be on the shelf for a, maybe a year or so, and then come back to it as like, oh, I'm navigating this section a little differently. You know, there's that one movement. Um, it starts. It's right in the middle of the ramp. You know, the top of the, the staff. You know, and I couldn't do that in the Shaw days at all. But I just did the. You know, just did the. We just did it with Clarion in New York, and that's cake. Cake <laughs> now. That's yeah, phenomenal. it's cake. It's easy, you know. But it was also because I was, um, you know, I'm doing some doing things differently in terms of my technique, um, in terms of navigating through the passaggio into the into the top there, and that really, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it hasn't. It, it's kind of revealed itself in recent times. I had a um, this past uh, November, I had an engagement in Hamburg. Um, the Rao Tavara Vigilia. Do you know this piece? No, I don't know it. It's um, I know Yuhani Rao Tavara. He's a big Finnish composer. Um, wrote this piece. Um, um, the Ves uh, Vespers. Um, so it's in the Orthodox um, um, field. Um, and um, and um, the, the 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 role that I had. It's it's got a big tenor and a big bass solo, and we're the priest and the deacon, as okay. like it always is in the vest in vesper settings. And I was I was the deacon. Yes, I was the deacon. And there's one passage. Um, first of all, singing in Finnish is tough. That's a tricky language. Big oh time. golly, it's I, you know I'll take um Church Slavonic any day. But yeah, Finnish is really tough. I had done the piece back in. The early in the mid early to, to early two thousands with Consperari, 
And then again with Capella Romana about, oh, that was before the pandemic. Um, and um, there's one section where um, you, uh, you, there's a, 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 you start kind of in the, the, the normal base E, chant a bit, and then work your way down to low E flat. And then you do this big bunch of text and you just kind of slide all the way up to the E above middle C. Okay. Uh, (laughs) And I could never really quite lick it. And then coming back to it this time, I don't know what I was. Yeah. I kind of found how to get through my passaggio without getting caught by pressing too hard on it. It's not just like an hourglass, you know? Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And so I've been kind of having a great, you know, revisiting things and, well, that's Thank awesome. You. That's really yeah. cool. What? And um, about the about your your primo passaggio being on an F sharp, I've never heard of that. I mean, even even so, I'm a like a basso cantante, like a lyric. Yeah, I've listened to you. <laughs> and yeah, so my my you know mine's like A flat, like very normal spot. Um, yeah. The low, much lower bases I know is like G. Mm-hmm. But it's ama- like it's amazing how much a half step in passaggio can indicate for how different a voice can be because. A regular low bass, his voice is so different from yours. You have like a very, an extremely rare kind of voice, yet the passaggio is only a half step Mm -hmm. off. It's kind Mm -hmm. of amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I don't know how, how did your, how did the teacher think lyric baritone, especially like French, I, I, French lyric I, baritone? Well, I, I, I might be, I might, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but I think what he was going for was to me to kind of figure out how to lighten up in that passaggio area. Fair enough. You know, and but it was uh, um, th- it wasn't the time yet. <laughs> no, no. I was. But th- that's 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 remarkable that, that you can that you can get up to an E four above the above the middle C. Yeah. I mean, that's a high note. That's a high note for any bass in a classical setting. Period. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I can I can do an F too. You know, I did one this morning. <laughs> Good for you. So your <laughs> so your your raw chest range is like what F one to F yeah. Basically, I guess. you know I you know I, I gotta you know I, there's only so much money in the bank for the top you know. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, you're, you're, you're gonna also be you know the literature. Um, you know I did a you know I I I I did a fair amount of solo work and you know, and I don't do that anymore. Uh, you know, because I and back. Um, you know, and I, I actually in the '90s, I don't know how I ever did it. I did a, you know, I did a Misa Solemnis, and I did I actually did a Verdi Requiem. No kidding. <laughs> and I thought I was going to die. You got to have some big, big high notes for the Verdi Requiem. But you're telling me, and you got to stay there. Yeah, but, it, but, but it's also where it lies the whole time. You know, and um, and also, you know, the way that music, you know, the range of it, it's for like first of all, it's for a normal, normal singer. Yeah, and you know, my ping notes start earlier right because when you flip into your passaggio that's when the ping starts right you know and then you know like in the the rec the verity you know okay you're kind of laying there and it's not time to ping yet you know (laughs) um so you know whatever i can you know check that box (laughs) oh yeah i mean well yeah the verity rec i mean usually that's like a you know trained verity bass or an operatic yeah exactly they're used to singing up there all the time whereas That choral repertoire, you're singing much lower most of the time. Right. Right. You yeah. might go up for a big, exciting passage, but for the right. most part, it's like low middle. Yeah. I'm yeah. not a very voice. It's a different kind yeah. of voice. No, I, I've, I've wondered yeah. this about you because I, I mean, I've heard your um, O Easy Zunto Zirish recording, which I figure is, I mean, that's like one of probably the only arias that like is comfortable throughout because it's, you exactly. know, exactly. And people said, why did I do? Why didn't I do opera? Well, it's not meant for my voice. It's it's meant for higher, higher bases. Yeah, it's meant for higher, you know. And um and yeah. So okay. <laughs> I've had a great run without it, you know. Yeah. And I'm just not a, you know, I'm just not a theatrical sort of person, you know. I'm too much I mean I so I I mean, so you know I'm an opera singer and yeah, right. You went to AVA. I just finished at AVA. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm headed out to Arizona Opera um in the fall to do some roles with them for next year very exciting yeah Um, terrific i've had i've had former staff singers who who ended up at ava and you know and like um back in my church i had a big church in 
outside of Detroit and Bloomfield Hills. And I used to get singers from Ann Arbor and, but like Michael Fabiano was in my choir. No way. <laughs> now that that's a voice. Uh, yeah. Thank. Well, we all knew it. Yeah. Fabiano. And he was um, going for broke, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was just with him at Santa Fe last summer. Um, yeah. And we knew, we knew each other because the ABA family. Yeah, like, sure. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but um, I remember he- like hearing his voice in person for the first time and everyone's like, all of us opera singers who've heard tons of professional opera singers, we were mm-hmm. still like, that uh, is, that is a, that's a serious voice right there. And he delivers. He does. And he gets so into character. It, oh, was, yeah. it was, it was so funny. We were doing Carmen, which is probably my favorite opera and he's playing Don Jose and Don Jose is like kind of a psycho. He's like, I mean, he, he kills Carmen in the end. He's a very jealous guy. And yeah. so Fabiana would be like, he would be like talking shit to people on stage in character and some of the core and some of the choristers were were like uncomfortable by it and i just loved it i was like he's so invested in this character right now that he is just through and through he's like this crazy guy don is the best don jose i've ever seen oh i'm sure i'm absolutely amazing yeah yeah i'll tell you it was yeah let's just say the messiah that we did was pretty intense (laughs) yeah i bet i bet you know so there we are which choir was that kirk in the hills bloomfield hills michigan Okay. I had 12 staff singers um, and um, had quite a, oh, uh, you know, a su- succession, you know, and Carla Derlikoff, um, who else? Andrew Mania. Okay. Have you heard of him? Baritone? Mm-hmm. He's yeah. really up and rising. I yeah. just, those are the kind of the, the big, the, the really big. Jesse Donner, um, he's a Heldon tenor. He's, cool. he's on the horizon, you know, he's, that was the, so when was this? Oh, I was there from 1998 to let's see, three years ago. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. And Fabiano, yeah. you and Fabiano was there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let's see. He followed. I'm trying to think the succession of my tenors from Ann Arbor. <laughs> he followed a <laughs> wonderful tenor named Michael Galland, who could sing Rossini like nobody's business, you oh. know. But then he decided he really wanted to be uh, uh, to restore houses. <laughs> okay. 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 And, uh, Get that but, security. Oh, I mean, he he had um, he could spin out coloratura and not come up for air. That's amazing. Just no one did those Messiah runs, you know, in my time there, like he could do them. You know, yeah. And, and a musician to boot, you know. But he wanted to fix all fix houses, so that was that. But good um, for him. I, so Michael <laughs> Michael followed him. Yeah. And so that would be, I don't know, 2000, early 2000 somewhere. This around. is this is early Fabiano. This is oh, very early. Pre ABA Fabiano. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Right. He was finishing up in Ann Arbor. He was studying who was the big tenor there. Um, famous guy. I can't remember her name. Yeah. 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 Amazing. But, yeah. Totally. And, cool. But cool. We that you, he was going to go for growth. Yeah. 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 Well, no, he's got that. He's he's got that mentality towards it. Oh, totally. He had Big it. Time. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. in the zone from day one. And you know, those are the people that those are the people that get there. Well, exactly. You have to have that drive. You have yeah. to. And yeah. opera's a pretty nutty career. Yeah, it is. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I just well, I my first I didn't have the voice for it. And I just don't have that kind of um it wasn't my call. Yeah. yeah, no, fair enough. And I miss, I really miss singing chamber choir. Yeah. I was in the the top choir at my undergrad. It was a really good music school, actually. James Madison University. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Great school. Really great choral program. And and some of my greatest musical experiences were being in the Madison Singers, that that top yeah. part. I mean, it's, there's not, yeah. there's nothing like, it's such a special form of yeah. music. And it also, like opera, it's one of these kind of last like bastions of like really old tradition where it's live and it's often unmiked, you know, it's just like yeah, very it's like, raw. It's just raw. There's, there's nothing, there's no gimmick or stick to it. You know? No. You it's know? just like, yeah. how's, how is like the, like the, like if you get a really nice blend, that's just such an amazing. Yeah. Thing. You know, I, I, I just count my, I'm so grateful because I've had so many, Wonder, you know, with, you know, well, the Shaw thing for starters, you know, and I went to the choir college, you know, um, um, you know, so everybody sang every day, you know, yeah. but then fast forward to the Shaw thing and then 
then Conspirare in Texas, and then just getting known, get, you know, being known for the my my B flats, you know, yeah. and just all over the place. <laughs> but then you know, Clarion in New York, you know, um, Steve you know, Stephen Fox's group, which you know we just did the Vespers at Carnegie beginning of May and just it's pretty special you know really I've special. got to, I've got to come see you perform live sometime yeah I'm, I'm well, gonna find a way to make it happen yeah well I'm singing at Oregon Bach the next next few weeks where okay um it, and um they're doing the Joby Talbot Path of Miracles do you know about Joby Talbot no I don't he's a Brit he um he hasn't written much choral music but um he um he's a big ballet composer I, from what I mm. understand, and he wrote this big long piece for the um, Brit choral group Tenebrae. Oh, I do know Tenebrae. Yeah. yeah. Well, he wrote this long. It's a whole concert work, and it's just incredible. And <sighs> I've done it a bunch. I recorded it with Conspirare, and have done it around. I'm do it. I do it quite a bit with a group called Aldivi, which is I got connected um, through Yale. Um, Noah Horn and Ariana Bella, and we're working on a tour for it next year, which I'm kind of excited about. Ooh. But also, I'll, I'll DV, it's one to a part. <laughs> oh, pressure's on. Yeah, but it's sweet. You know, you'll, you'll it's, probably have to have, have covers or something. Yeah, Is that a but, thing? Is that a thing in, in the choral world? Have I'm covers? Sorry? Is it a thing to have covers in the choral world? Uh, or you just kind of got to be able to get through it no matter I just what? Stay healthy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, well, that's a great I mean, question. I mean, what, um, how do you deal with your voice when you get sick? Like what happens to those low money notes when you get sick? Cause a lot of people, when they get sick, their voices get lower and richer down there. Mine is not that way. I, I oh, like, really, I, I lose, I often lose my low notes when I'm sick. I lose my top. Okay. I'm fine. You got it. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. In fact, I get more. Okay. You know, I'll have a good low, low D, D, whatever D, whatever that D is. D1, you know, but, D1. You know, but it's really not pretty, you know. But it's still raw chest voice, which is so. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm not a frying, or I'm not trying to do any any of that, you know. And I really don't, I really don't quite understand how that all works. But I have no need to really work. You don't need to, no. Yeah, exactly. You know, I hear from young basses fairly frequently, you know, and they send me their sounds, and oh, that's not really quite your. First of, all, first of all your speaking voice is right here you know yeah and they send me their sounds i love that yeah and, and, they, and they say well what can we do to um make my voice lower and i and i kind of gently say i said it's kind of what you've been given you know yeah that's and and and, and, and it's a it, 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 it yeah you can fabricate things but it doesn't put the 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 foundation under a choir the same way no, you know, and, and I think that's one of the <laughs> things that I've been uh, that my vo well, my voice really does. Um, you know, I can. Um, there's fundamental to my sound. Yeah, it's not just upper partials. Yeah, and um, so so there's that, and um, yeah, yeah. So, no, there's there's a lot of that nowadays. I mean, I'm you know I'm in a, a little four person bass group called the bass gang and we, uh, we yeah, do, saw and, and we do all kinds of crazy vocal stuff but it's not it's just a totally different yeah. thing it's like not meant to be performed live it's like supposed to be kind of showy and yeah and That's like fun, kind of, yeah. kind of like wacky sounding it is it's it's a fun it's totally a fun thing um and you know cuz with like subharmonics and you yeah. know other, other techniques like that you can get way down there but and in a recording setting you don't have to worry about volume Exactly. If you're you, know, right here. you can you can you can boost you can boost this and that. So in a live setting, it's it's very different. But um, yeah. you've worked the, with a guy. Um, have you worked with a guy named Tu Yang? Oh yeah. Oh, I sing with him. Yeah. So he's 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 a he, we're we are we've never met in person, but we've been friends online for a while. He's a great guy. He great is, guy. Great musician. Yeah. Great voice. And I know he he's really good at the subharmonics. Subharmonic yeah. singing, and I'm wondering if 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 he's done that in live performances with you, and uh, you know, kind of what, what that how that sounds in a live performance. You know, I don't think so. I, 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 you know, I'm trying to think. I just no, we I, no, we just we just connected. I was um doing a Capella Romana gig, and we went up to Seattle, and he happened to be in Seattle, and so we got separate, but we didn't sing together that time. Okay, 
trying to think when the last time we sang was it St. Tecon's? Because he's got a, he's got a great natural bass voice too. Yeah, he does. So he doesn't need yeah. the subs unless it goes freaky low. No, um, yeah, but I don't think I've ever have I ever stood next to him. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I, he's always like two down or something. You know, I could yeah. be wrong about that, but you know, the gigs all blur together after a while too. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You know, um, Cameron. You know who Cameron Beecham is? Mm-mm. He is the bass in a room full of teeth. I know that group though. Familiar with that group? Yeah, yeah. he is one of my. I just love Cam. Um, we started. It was a rock vespers in North Texas, you know, and um, then he and they brought me in, and the conductor said, "Oh, I got this bass. I'm bringing him in. He was a student of mine. He's in Atlanta. Blah 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 blah. Um, you're gonna love him." And we did. You know, you know how you, you get a stand partner and you just click. You know, oh, big He's time. Smart, intelligent singer, good voice. Doesn't um, and, and no spotlights need to be redacted, you know, focused on him, all of it, you know, and we just hit it off and then and done a lot together. Haven't done anything in a while. Well, pandemic kind of took care of that. Yeah. Um, but um, but he was, was one of the founding members of Room Full of Teeth and they do all these crazy, crazy techniques. arrangements. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy stuff. And he's like, the, I think he's the, the co-artistic director now. And but he can do all that stuff, you know, and yeah. you know, and he can do the overtone thing, and yeah, you know, and um, it makes it can make for a cool effect. Oh yeah, you know, it brings yeah, a new color, yeah. a new color thing. Yeah, you have to be mic'd exactly. Yeah. Very, it's a very niche thing, you know, breaking ground with going beyond the the traditional choral sounds that yeah that we that I grew up on. You know. I want to piggyback off something you said a minute ago about you know your your chest range being a very natural thing like it's the same it's the same advice i give to young bassists when they ask me for tips and like how do i lower my voice and i'm like well your your chest your natural chest range really is pretty set you can do a lot to strengthen those notes and you can Mm -hmm. fill them out and they'll likely fill out as you mature but you can't you're not just going to gain a fifth no you know on the bottom whereas the top you have a lot of room to Mm -hmm. grow and extend your upper range and figure out how to sing through the passaggi and stuff like that but the low end really is kind of, yeah. It's kind. It kind of is what it is. Yeah, and I found that out even in recent times. You know, having to kind of do that, learn how to navigate that glissando up to a high E. You know, and just yeah, yeah you know. And but also, I have to be careful. Um, if I and I guess I guess any singer can say this would say this. Um, if you work that top two, uh, you know, a lot, you can lose some stuff on the bottom. Yeah. You know, and I find that depending on the role I'm singing, sometimes I'll have a role that sits more towards like the baritone side of yep. like bass baritone because I have those notes. Like I'm pretty in an operatic setting. I'm I'm pretty solid through like a high G. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I, so I can, out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I can sing the stuff like Escamillo or like the Don Giovanni, which traditionally yeah. can be sung by baritone or a bass if they have high notes. And I'll find after a role that sits really high, like if I've been singing that for like a month or so uh and if i haven't specifically been like working on the low stuff during mm-hmm. like warm-ups and practice sessions i'll lose a little bit of the the yeah. power the power and comfort down there yeah i you know the, um this that one uh, you probably found it um the, the that's that piece by benedict sheehan um song of simeon yeah 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 that he wrote for me yeah you know and then and he, when he sent me the score i was like oh he wrote that for you i didn't realize that yeah he wrote that for me yeah awesome. and um and when when oxford published it they made him have two versions of that piece <laughs> one in a key that the rest of the world can do yeah <laughs> yeah well, what is that goes down to what a f. flat or f? f f is an f you know <laughs> and that really is scraping the barrel i think um and you know it's kind of a gimmick thing, a little bit. I don't, you know, I'm, I kind of just said that. You can erase that, you know. But <laughs> but 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 Benedict knows I, you know, I've got it pretty much. But still, I it was hard. Um, it, uh, you know, um, the vowels down there. Yeah, you know, it kind of um, how if if it's a more open vowel, um, it's more of a challenge to. To, to do i i i found and um, and 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 the way you approach it too of course and you can say that about it <clears throat> any well, the, i mean you definitely find once you get closer to the extremes you've got to be it's like an exponential curve as far as kind of 
how like careful you have to be navigating it mm-hmm. in, ter- in terms of that to like maximize efficiency and resonance and all this stuff. So right. for your voice, and I mean, like if you go, let's say, let's say you did a, a scale down from like a C or, or let's say a, a B down to an E, like low B down to really low E. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you thinking about vocally as, as you go down that scale? You think like lengthen the vocal tract or just make sure you stay relaxed, keep the larynx really low or, or what? Um, I do all that, but I also think I keep my, my, my brain up here, my, my feeling of placement up here. Help the buzz, keep the buzz in the sound. Yeah. yeah, Well, I'm a very much aware of the buzz. Yeah. And, but also if I get to, you know, um, yeah. It, it, it's, um, I, it, it's like you're digging yourself into a hole and you can't get back out of it yeah. on the, on the ascent back up. I've really, I've really found, um, that, um, in the Chestnikov piece I do the, 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 with, which has the low G at the end. Yeah. And, uh, and to get back up out of that, to so that, that C, you yeah. know, if you're, if it's too, if, if you're, if you're pressing down on the G too, no, you get caught. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. so I always, I just kind of keep my, my placement, my brain up there and just have that low note just kind of okay be suspended from that note if that makes sense well it's amazing you can keep you can keep something that low in the same vocal line because like i I don't know i mean i don't know maybe like an eric holloway might be able to do something like that but you know uh, any bass that normally would even be able to get down to a low g that would be like the absolute bottom where it's like you're recruiting probably muscles you shouldn't to get down there. Right. But for you, it's more just like you just kind of dip down there and then yeah. come back up. Yeah. Which is that's that's a voice you need to sing that piece too. Right. You know, yeah. I, I, I find also about a lot of it is about the sense of line musically. Oh, yeah. You know, and that is, you know, um oftentimes the you know, singing those low notes is kind of a I can sing these low notes, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they kind of do the press thing and yep. and all that. And that was one thing Mr. Shaw really um, put in us, um, instilled in us. You know, it's well, first of all, it's never about you. I love that. And it's always about the music. And um, and it's and it's a Jerry Blackstone thing. Never louder than beautiful. Uh, um, and. Mm. And um, also, I, uh, um, you know, I never, I'm, I'm grateful things didn't start to evolve for me until later, because I didn't have the pressure, I wasn't in the situ- situation where I was pressured to really push my voice harder than it should have been pushed during my 20s and my 30s. You know, that's, I think, we, we hear, so often hear of singers that, you know, they're, they're just the really hottest thing, you know, and, um, and they're, and they're going for, they're going really hard at it. And then they've pushed it too hard. Yeah. And then it kind of goes. Usually you know, it happens with like singing repertoire too big or yeah. too, mm-hmm. that like a, a more mature voice is required. Yeah. The, but you know, someone's, you, you know, the agent's like, we can make a lot of money if you start singing Wagner at 32. Uh, but you shouldn't be singing Wagner at 32. Singing Mozart as long as you can. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, um, and, and yeah, I get this, that this one tenor I had, um, not Michael, but Jesse Donner, big house of a guy. He's corn fed from Iowa. Huge, huge voice. <laughs> you know, he's going to sing Tristan, you know, he, yeah. he, you know and, 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 and Siegfried and on and on and on. But he's not going to be, you know, and he knows that he's, you know, he's kind of got his all his ducks in a row, and um, and 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 he'll and he'll he'll be doing it, you know. He's already done some cover at the Met, you know. Yeah. They, and he did, um, he did, um, did he do? Oh, he did Chicago, a young artist thing. Yeah, for a while. great program. And, yeah, and just, but I'll never forget one day. It was summer. He was doing a solo, and we were just kind of horsing around between services, and um. I got the oh, I got the Verdi Requiem out, and he, you know, uh, and so we went through the Injamisco and and just started having fun with it. And then he called me on Tuesday, and he, he said it was really good. We did that because I just got a call just now because they're doing a summer sing at, at U of M, and the tenor bailed out on the Verdi Requiem. So I got to learn the Verdi Requiem in the next two days. Yeah. <laughs> 
but still, uh, you know, he, you know, he, it'll be, he, you know, he's getting, he's laying his groundwork carefully. And, um, yeah. but, you know, the baritones that I went to school with, you know, um, they were the baritones, but now they're not doing anything. Yeah. You know? It happens to a lot of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and fortunately, you know, I, I'm, you know, I feel grateful that I'm, you know, I go off on these gigs and, um, you know, half the choir, but most of the choir is like, could be my kids. <laughs> Not quite, but you know, you're hearing about their, you know, their, you know, what they're going through in life and on and on and on. And, you know, my voice is changing. Yeah. You're 40. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and all, all that type of thing, you know, so, but, you know, but, um, so I'm, and, and, you know, I'm grateful because a voice like mine, our shelf life is really long. You take care of it, man. And I'm, really di- and I'm really, and I'm really, I'm really diligent about that. I, you know, yeah. my, my life is kind of boring. <laughs> That's okay. You know, I don't drink, I don't do anything to abuse my body. Um, yeah. and, um, because I just, well, I just love it too much. And I know there's, a, you know, there's going to be a day, you know, but still I'm just grateful yeah. like to Benedict Sheehan and, and Stephen Fox for, um, the opportunities that have keep me in, and to document, you know, what, you know, I know Steven's been really, um, um, um generous, um, cause we, you know, we, we just released our rock Mononoff Vespers disc in January. Oh, um, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it audio or audio video? It's audio. Audio. And we've been, li- well, Steven, um, um, he went to Dartmouth and his, senior project was conducting the vespers like around 2000 he was a russian major when it went to then he and he just fell in love with the language and the repertoire and all that went to he was in st petersburg for a couple of years founded an early music group early music orchestra in st petersburg but really got totally immersed came back um I, our our paths crossed when i was um um brought in the man who was the choir the organist choir master at saint thomas fifth avenue i knew from my england time um i sang for him as a well he wanted me to take a spot in saint paul's choir in london cathedral choir um that didn't it didn't kind of work out um there's a bunch of stuff and it wasn't meant to be but then he came to new york and kept trying to get me to come to new york to be in the choir there and so we were doing a rock mountain off vespers and so i would i would just come in and do um one-offs and recordings and tours yeah. and yeah. Um, so but steven was a tenor fabulous tenor he, he was brought in as an extra he was our coach so it, you know our connection developed from there but steven um developed uh, we, we started singing the vespers under steven um across 10 years so it really sat on the stove for quite a while hmm. just just, you know, so when we came back to it, we recorded it right before the pandemic. And then when we um, came back to it this year, you know, and we, we performed, I think, across that decade, maybe three times, you know. Um, so it, you know, the, the core of us really had that piece down and he certainly does, you know. Awesome. Is that on, he, is that available on, you know, streaming services? And Yeah, it is. Yeah. You can find it on YouTube. Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. It's, but it's really, and, and since Steven's so intimate with the language, you know, he's not just conducting the notes, he's really conducting yeah. the text. Yeah. And yeah. That really comes through. And so, and then we did, um, main stage Carnegie performance beginning awesome. of May, which which the it's New York Carnegie. Times loved it. Yeah, it's Carnegie. I mean, that's... I got a whole paragraph in the review. Not the I'm Times. Not, but... I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm it was kind not... of funny. <laughs> I mean, it's it's. Re- I mean, Car- I feel like Carnegie has a lot of the operatic side mm-hmm. of performances. Um, like it's like a, definitely a stable for opera singers to do like a Messiah mm-hmm. there. They mm-hmm. probably don't hear many like choral no. profundos show up on that stage well, yeah. often. You yeah. know. But just the the that um you know I and what you know in my Shaw days um and in the choir college days but particularly the Shaw in the nineties you know Carnegie had a January workshop and was always a big choral orchestral thing you know um and um so but then when we going you know, doing the this clarion gig you know walking on stage you know it was the first time I ever walked on that stage when there wasn't an orchestra or risers for one hundred and fifty <laughs> you know it was just the thirty. 33 of us you know wow it was kind of daunting but you know yeah. let's do it you know and do you um, do you ever get 
stage fright anymore or did you ever get stage fright or, or because oh, yeah. you're you're so solid with your oh, voice yeah. And your I, yeah i i i'm ter- yeah I, I i i yeah i um i um yeah i just so pig, so piggyback off that cuz like i think i think if you i think if you have none of it then that takes away something from the performance i think it's it's great to have some kind of anxiety yeah. as long as i found if you're really solid in your technique then the adrenaline usually just helps the singing, yeah. at least for operatic singing. Now, my question is how nerves and stage fright and that kind of amped up state of mind affects the really low stuff where, you know, you need to be relaxed and really open. And, yeah. and uh, I know I know a lot of basses would struggle with that, like relying on the really low notes in an amped up kind of environment. You know, that low F is scary. Yeah. 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 You no, know, because it really is. And, and it's, um, it's like you're walking on ice and it's going to start and you're afraid it's going to start to crack, you know? And mm-hmm. so I find I really have to zone out the house. Yeah. You know, and, and, and every, every singer does, I guess, you know, you just kind of got to be in your, in your, in your zone. You're not, not, you're not disconnected, but you, you know, um, get lost in the music basically well and also i found you know when i start going low and people are kind of like oh it's him you know yeah yeah it <laughs> becomes know, pretty the one apparent i don't want to get yeah. pulled off into <clears> that <throat> thing i gotta i gotta stay focused on my channel and what i'm doing yeah you know and um so yeah that's and that so works. so at at what point does it start feeling like you're walking on ice like because F that yes. G can feel like it. The G. The, the low G, you know. But um, and also it's oftentimes, particularly that low G, they you know, they want you down there for a long time. Yeah. So it's not just a matter of phonation, it's a matter of breath management. Yeah. And it's kind of like you have that balloon and you're just letting little air out at a time, but it has to be consistent, you know? Yeah. And I kind of use the analogy, mm-hmm. like, you're, like you're painting and you got paint in the paintbrush, but it, it kind of, you can't, it, it has to be an even cover the whole time. Uh huh. And that's one thing I talk about with when I'm working with singers, you know, I'm, um, about the consistency of tone. That's everything. And learning how to manage that. You know, yeah. it's not just, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Shaw, had, one of the things he also said, um, um, the beginning of the note is never the loudest part of the note. Mm. It's like you're a cellist yeah. and you're caressing the note. And I love the analogy of a cello. You know, you're just, you know, just definitely, you know, <clears throat> you know not, not hitting the cat, but just petting yeah. the cat, you know, <laughs> the cat, yeah. and, and um, yeah. So lots of, uh, he was, and, w- and when you're, when you're approaching this low G now, I assume it's always going to come out, right? I, like in your mind, it's more about just getting your standard of it. Right. Yeah. And also how I sing that two things, having enough um, gas in the tank to come back up to the, the sea. Yeah. Uh, and finding that little hole where that, that you kind of have to put the sea in. Uh, yeah. Uh, to come out of that you know that recording i did with conspire i am you know it it's good i'd like to do it again <laughs> because of that one spot it's like I, I i hear a little in it you know like i'm I'm gonna make it but i'm gonna make it you know yeah 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 you know and uh, but it's, I was, the, it's the kind of thing where like the world the audience everyone's gonna love it but you'll be like ah, i could have done it a little better yeah, and then the, and the Benedict's recording too. I'm like, uh, you know, there's like, oh, so cool, you know, and yeah, yeah. So you know, the one recording I'm re- I, I really am happy with, happiest with, and I'm I'm, I'm happy with them all. Um, but the um, the um, oh, it was the Zlenukov piece. He's a young Russian guy. You know this okay. guy? No, no. He's fabulous. He's a young guy. He has some sort of choir in Moscow. Um, and he wrote a, a, a piece, which is a setting of a text in the Orthodox liturgy from the Holy Week. And it's, um, do not lament me, O mother. He wrote, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's number two in a cycle of three mm. 
for a profundo and choir, and I'm itching to do one and two. I'm just itching. I just that's, but I want to get that down. I want to, I want to record it. I want to. That's kind of my the one thing I want to do. Um, but my, well, that was that was one of the questions I had was pieces that you really want to do that you haven't gotten a chance to do yet. So I guess that's two of them. That yeah, it's um, but yeah, but in, back to this middle movement. Right. I feel like I'm happy with where everything fit, you know, vocally and yeah. how consistent I am, you know, and how it feels and all that type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, there's, um, there's, you know, I want to do more, um, of the, the, the orthodox stuff, um, to get that down because there's just a ton of it. There's Chesnikov and Gretchen Ninoff and, um, and then, oh, who was the, the guy? Uh, there's some more recent ones. Um, I can, their my name's escaping me. You know, it's kind of a weird time for Russian rep. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, we did, when we did, um, we kind of, um, Stephen and I kind of had this fantasy about when we went to Russia um, back during the Obama administration when we, uh, right after, shortly after we did the New York premiere of a piece by William Sh- Steinberg. Do you know that composer at all? Mm-mm. He was a student of, no, Maximilian Steinberg. Yeah, it's Maximilian Steinberg. He was a student of Rimsky Korsakov. He was Russian. Um, he was roommates, like he was a classmate with um, Stravinsky at the conservatory. Um, he He was Jewish, but then converted to orthodoxy and married Korsakov's daughter. Revolution came, he stayed when everybody else was fleeing. But he wrote this piece called Passion Week, which is a orthodox setting of orth- um, um, Holy Week texts um, in the Orthodox, North Russian Orthodox Church. It, it was kept, he had to keep it hidden um, for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it kind of made its way, his, st- his student was Shostakovich, whose student was... Uh, I forget his name, but he became a, an associate conductor of the New York Philharmonic. His daughter was Clarion's manager for a while and had been still very close to the, the organization. And she said, Stephen, I got this piece from my dad. It has never been performed. It's it's really fabulous. It's kind of like orthodox music meets Poulenc. Okay, interesting. Really, Very cool. It's very minimal. Not, I want to say not minimal like minimal music we have today but it's yeah. you know how concise pool line can be mm-hmm. you know if there's that element and, and, and a harmonic language um and a cool mix so we did the you know capella romana did the west coast premiere and just and they recorded it and then we did it in new york and then we on the u.s state department um this was in the during the obama administration the director of cultural affairs just happened to come to our concert and and it had never been performed in russia Oh. And she said, "Oh, this would be something that we would get excited about." So, and the and the climate, of course, was totally different then. So, we went to St. Petersburg and Moscow to do the premieres there, and just you know, people were just you know, all you know, packed the place, and it was all big, big deal. And then, but we did one of our performances in um, like I I can have the name of the hall wrong in the Moscow Conservatory. I think it's Rachmaninoff Hall or something. Built in the built in the nineteenth century, very very cool acoustic. Really, oh my gosh! We didn't have a sound check before; we just go on and do it. <laughs> and we only, we kind of got rattled at first because it was so cool. Yeah, but it was where the Rock Monadol Vespers had been premiered. Amazing, and we were like, oh, wouldn't it be cool to come back and do this? Do this here? Yeah. So that was kind of our hope, and then you know things changed, so that that's never going to happen. But um, so, what but, question to go off that? Because clearly, that was a really a really high, that was a highlight of your career. What are some of your other favorite performances, favorite moments, favorite projects from all your decades in this uh, oh my gosh. sacred work? Well, performing it for the first time with Mr. Shaw in France. Yeah. You know, that was, first of all, the choir, people just did not move a muscle <laughs> in that performance. Um, those, those performances, it, that was, yeah, I'll never forget that. Um, the Carnegie yeah um, engagement um doing um um path of miracles with um um i got to do it with the yale yale scola cantorum and it's about the pilgrimage to santiago in spain so it was all the destinations that, are, that this piece talks about 
Oh, so cool. this is for each movement's about a different town in Spain, and we did it in all four towns. So that was that was kind of special. Neat, yeah. Um, and, and you know, I, mean, I kind of um, um, hmm, I'm just this is kind of hard. Um, you know, singing for Craig Hella Johnson. Yeah, that big know, name that, there. You know, he 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 brings up an element that is. Kind of taps into a, a sphere that you know that's just not of this world. Cool. Um, the um, the big things that we did with did with Mr. Shaw when we did a war requiem at oh. Carnegie. Yeah, that was pretty sweet, and a Berlioz requiem. I, I wish I got to do Brahms requiem with him. That's I just. You know, did Misa Solemnis with him. Um just but the but the 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 Berlioz Requiem. Oh my golly. Great piece. Oh, and doing we did Mahler 8 at Carnegie with him. Another great piece. Oh yeah. We recorded it in Atlanta. And he um for his 80th birthday year, um Carnegie did a, did three concerts for him. They did we did Mahler 8. They brought the chamber choir up from Atlanta to do Bach B minor in okay. Carnegie. And mm-hmm. then we did the Rock Vespers in St. John the Vine. And he always wanted to do the do Ma- the Mahler eight um in um Carnegie. But you know, he wanted but we but he wanted to have choir one on the first tier and choir two on the stage. <laughs> I was in choir two. <laughs> hey, yeah, was, yeah. thank you. You know, but it, it, you know, it, we did a lot of counseling and it held together. And it was um um oh who's the soprano oh my gosh um his favorite oh Sylvia McNair was off that week okay so she sang in choir too okay she's listening to the chorus that was great but you know <laughs> but singing as an undergrad you know we had such incredible experiences we you know we sang we sang at her, we sang at her Leonard Bernstein you know yeah you know. amazing yeah. amazing you no know. but um so you know. I guess those there's a you know singing singing with John Scott in the St. Thomas Choir and recording with him recording with him there and, and at St. Paul's you know going on tour singing in Leipzig at the Thomas Kirche yeah awesome you know awesome I, I feel so fortunate you know yeah uh, you know that's a, a, a number of really cool performance experiences uh, yeah um, question about your about your technique. So do you do most of your practicing just through rehearsal and through performance or do you, are you ever alone in the practice room working on things, tweaking things, working on the passaggio? Depends on the piece. Um, you know, I'll do, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll if, if it's something that's re- you know, really, I got the, there's, there's, I, I, well, I need to kind of Oregon Bach. We're doing the Penderecki credo. So I just need to kind of sit down at the piano and think through it. I'm a really good reader. Okay. You know, I, yeah. I'm, you know, and if, and I, but I don't like, I think, it, you know, someone needs to kind of go into rehearsal having looked at the, you know, figured it out. Um, but I will, um, I don't do a lot of warm up. Well, it depends on the, depends on who the conductor is. And if I know kind of, the 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 sound that they have in their choir if it's I, 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 what am i trying to say here if it's a more of a sound like this <laughs> you know that 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 plays me out and and, yeah. and particularly like you know i as, as i as the years progress um you know, I kind of shy away from those things. Um, but um does that happen that you'll have you'll have directors that want a much lighter sound out of you? Um uh, they, they, they don't say specifically, but I can just tell about the sound of the whole choir, you know. Yeah. But also I, you know, um it, it's I find it's easier. Like one thing I really love about Al D V, because we're basically one to a part or one to two of the part, you know. Yeah. I can just, I don't have to worry about, not that I'm sticking out, but I know how to manage myself and I don't have to think about how to um, um, tailor it. Because that, yeah. you know, when you're working up in your passaggio, 
that can that can fry you, you know. Um, yeah, that, oh, yeah. Can, that, can, that can wear you down. Um, but I, you know, I just kind of do, you know, I, I, like like this morning, I was just kind of horsing around here, just kind of, you know, doing, ah, you know, just to kind of, <laughs> you know, I, a little bit. And um, I, oh, I had the, I was listening to the Elgar Dream, Dream of Gerontius. Do you know that hmm. piece at all? No, it sounds cool. Oh, though. oh, it's got a great bass roll. I okay. just, and I, and, and I love Janet Baker. I just, yeah. She just, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, and I got this great recording. So I put, I put that on today and I was kind of like singing at it and I hadn't warmed up and I was like, he comes in on a, you know, the middle D and I was like, Oh, not there yet. <laughs> you know, like, so I had to yeah. kind of, I had to kind of, you know, blow out the carburetor a little bit, not, that, not, not in terms of loudness, but just kind of the channel, kind yeah. of get the vacuum cleaner out and get the night crap out. You yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so, a uh, question about because you've this is cool. I didn't realize you had worked with a number of like you know fully professional opera singers. How does your? I've always wondered about this because you can't. It's really hard to tell volume via recordings, mm-hmm. you know. So I can hear your voice against a chamber choir, but I've always been curious how your voice volume wise stacks up against like a fully trained professional opera singer in your. Obviously, the low notes, they're not going to have them. So I think more like in your middle and upper upper range. Um, well, it depends on the singer, of course. Um, yeah. And and their approach. Uh-huh. If they're just throttling for throttle's sake. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that was the... Uh, and that, that's not to... Uh, um, downplay them at all because they, they're in their zone i just thought of a singer i sang with in shaw and we're, we're great friends christine gerke oh yeah yeah i've, I've heard her perform oh my gosh that's well, a big you know, that's a I, big I, voice I, I, oh my gosh well we all well we all knew where she was going yeah you know she came to shaw camp, we call it shaw camp um it was my second year she was only 22 and just a she camp. was kind of like gilda radner <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, oh my gosh, what is this crazy person? Yeah. You know? And then and then she sang um that we were doing Brahms Liebes Leader. And she got to do the you know, got to end the recording, she did it all. But um, but just um I was, I was tying this in with singing with opera singers. Yeah. Um and of course she was young, um, but just kind of Knowing how to navigate against a, a, a sound or work with a sound and work in the channel, like like with Clarion, there's a lot of opera singers in there, yeah, that are making their way. You know, more you know early early opera or you know Mozart and Handel and yeah, right, stuff like that. You know, um, but uh, but but Christine, she, um, you know, we all knew where she was headed. You know, when she said <laughs> that, that when she did that one, da 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 ba 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 ba, yeah. the fast one. I thought, what flashed through my brain. Brunhilde's calling her Valkyrie sisters, you know? Oh, yeah, big time. You know, but now talk about a technique that she had to redo. Yeah. Because, you know, because she was singing, she was trying to keep Handel and Mozart going and, and lost her support and then and then had that big crash. Yeah. You know, but now <clears> she's not her voice is meant for the Wagner. Oh, we all know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the personality, too. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. So, so up with opera singers, it depends on the singer. Um, and it depends on how in tune they are about ensemble singing. That's the thing. No, yeah. Yeah. Well, because the ensemble is all about blend and, and balance and everything. And yeah. And um, this is my, a friend of mine who we were undergrads together. He's a big um, conductor coach. He can play anything in New York. Um you know, he's conducted at the Met and all this type of thing. And he doesn't mince words. <laughs> and he had a great line. And um, and it was, uh, he was working with somebody and it was just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he said to her, he said, honey, it's a pitch, not a region. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know, and that, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. And there's a, 
uh, yeah, you have to let the horses run and mm-hmm. everything, but you also got to be, I'm, re- that's one thing I'm really aware of when I sing, um, because the cycles that I'm producing are slow. Yeah. You know, sopranos going, you know, they yeah. can vary the, you know, a little bit and it's not changing the pitch. I can, you know, if I, if I'm not really steady, you know, because I'm only doing how many cycles on a low C or B or A. Like 50 or 40 or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're doing 48 or 46, it's a different note. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. and I'm, and my, and part of my, my job is to, it's, it's what my overtones are what everybody's tuning to. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, I, when I listen to my recordings and stuff and I can hear, I'm singing a low E. I can hear the low, low C. I can hear the third two octaves above that. Yeah. In that overtones, you know, that was, that's really pronounced. Yeah. And I, and, and that's also a gauge for me, um, not just in regards to tuning, but in terms of um, my vowel color, if it's a little off and that those overtones aren't there. Yeah. I, I, that's, I need to work on that. You know, I, that's the thing I need to, you know, to tend to. Um, yeah, definitely. And also, and I think that's also um, because I'm so aware of just this maintaining this, the, the, the steadiness of the sound and the consistency and not kind of going this way um, has um, and not pressing on it. You know, that's 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 been a big factor in my longevity. Yeah. Um, I listened to some other basses that I've sung with and yay. And I realized they're 10 years younger than I am. And it's kind of this. Yeah. You know, yeah, that can happen. You know, also, you know, this past summer, uh, just a year ago, I got to be, um, um, in, I was in Jerusalem with Patram, the Patriarch Tikhan Russian American Music Foundation. <laughs> um, we were recording the Rachmaninoff Vespers. And it was an international group and it was all men. And it was like 50, some of us. And it was from all over the world. We had a big, there were eight octavists. So how do you balance that? Well, yeah, that, well, there's that. But but that said, there were some octavists that are like, I really wish I was an octavist, you know? You know, yeah. just kind of, you know, and, and some that were young and, but amazing sounds, but there was, um, but in terms of the forthrightness of their singing, yeah, probably a little too forthright, you know. And just to kind of, uh, I think one thing that my I've been very keen aware of um, is that I don't allow myself to get bottom heavy. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know, honking yeah. at it, you know, yeah. and the conductor was kind of funny, and and I thought it was some ba- some oftentimes with low basses. Okay, if you kind of alter your vowel a little bit more, you'll get another semitone out of your voice. You know, get, <laughs> I can get another note out, and um, the kind of modify. Well, like how you modify vowels on the top. Yeah, right. You kind of go the other direction, and everything be kind of everything kind of becomes a generic. Uh, you yeah. know. <laughs> But when the vowel is eh, it needs to be eh, you know. Right. And the conductor was funny. She was kind of busting on some of these bases. And she was from she was from Moscow. Fabulous conductor. Oh, I just loved her. I just loved her gesture and the way she, you know. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big thing as a conductor. I just can't, I can't stand time meters, you know. Sure, sure. You know, if you're conducting a choir, you're you're holding the choir, the sound of the choir in your hand. It's like you're riding yeah. a horse. <laughs> and you're directing that horse through how you handle those leashes. Yeah, that's because it's telling the horse turn here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she and I, Ekaterina Antonenko is her name. Fabulous. She's um, she studied with um Peter Phillips and Marcus Creed and does all this early stuff. And her Moscow Chamber Choir does it. And you don't know they're from Moscow. You think, oh my gosh, is this a Brit choir? Really. I know you think you wow. immediately you, you associate they're going to oversing, you know, or not, yeah, not yeah. Over, but it's going to be brr, darker you know? in, yeah. But like the, in terms of, you know, when you oftentimes when you're when someone's singing in a, in, a, in a language that's foreign to them, you can tell like yeah. their English is not quite sounding quite Englishy. Yep. 
Yeah. You no, know, but she was kind of funny. I mean, she had me right in the front row, right in the center. And, and that was because my voice could focus in what was coming from me yeah. behind me in terms of color and vowel color and, and yeah. overtone spectrum. Yep. And, um, and I was joking with her because I, I had this great, amazing singer behind me who could just mow off a choir with a low A like nobody's business. There's a recording of him out there. I'm, I, we sang a lot of liturgies when we were there. I didn't because everything was in Cyrillic, and I don't use <laughs> Cyrillic. And um, but there's a there's a a, a, a recording a, a video um, of the Chesnikov um, Cherubic hymn, and he goes and he's the only one, and he goes for this low A or whatever at the end. And this first of all, um, the color of the top of, of that of, of of an Orthodox troop. I've yeah. never heard tenors like it. Just <laughs> you know, and part of me feels guilty for like singing this repertoire, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's it's a blood thing. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and but then he comes up with a and it just is like <laughs> a like a, a tidal wave coming in. It just one voice mowing off the rest of the choir. <laughs> That's. Know. Um, so like like a low a like you can sing or like bigger yeah, than yeah. You can oh sing? Yeah. yeah oh yeah he was a great guy I, you know his name is slava how's that for a wrestling wow. name? <laughs> you know big burly guy you know, you know. And, um, but but also um uh, you know doing the like the vespers with steven you know and it's it's amazing but having done it with a primarily orthodox tradition group yeah you know, there's something in the soul that we don't have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I listened to the clarion recording and it's it's phenomenal. It's got, you know, BBC Music Magazine said it's just, you know, you know, incredible and all this type of thing. And but it's just a, as with every American choir, it's gonna sound a little manicured. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, and I kind of want right. The, 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 all the mezzo we had for I did another recording of it and it was also Patron, but it was a mixed choir version. And the mezzo and the tenor both came from was it St. Petersburg or Kiev? Oh, I've never heard a tenor like that or a mezzo. Just okay, really? that's the voice it was written for. Yeah. Yeah, no, just velvet. And the, and the tenors, they, the way they go up, and 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 they and they never die. <laughs> I, they just keep coming and keep coming. And these guys, I don't know, they're drinking vodka all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're out smoking too. You know, <laughs> no, you know, it's fuel for them. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I go on a gig. You know, I, I, and and they, and they say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, no, because I, you know, I don't drink because uh, it just makes me feel awful. It goes right yeah. here. Yeah. I feel it. My, my, my chords get raw. Like mm. I feel it. I feel it the next day. Um, it's just a dryness and edginess, a feeling of burn. Mm. Um, and, and, and then mentally, of course, you know, I just, yeah. so sorry, I'm yeah. boring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> so and, um, I got another question for you before we get in. I actually have some, some questions from my patrons and some, some of the uh, base guys that, so we'll get into that in a second, but I wanted to ask just like how you are, We've talked a little bit about how your your upper range has developed since you know your voice first dropped, but how has how has everything on the low end kind of developed? Because you said you know when you're a freshman in high school, you've got this E flat one. You know how has how has that you know extreme low part of your range changed over the last however many decades? I think it's gotten fuller. Yeah, you know you, you know adolescent boys kind of have that you know like this talk like that you know. <laughs> You know how they yeah. sound, uh -huh. you know, and um, and so I think there's more fundamental in my sound. Um, and with that comes a, a, a better overtone spectrum. Yeah. A, a more, you know, mature overtone spectrum as you know, it's so that's, you know, I had when we when we were, when we were undergrads, we did a oh, New York Philharmonic was doing a big Mahler festival. Because okay. that's what they were the last time they completely cutted the hall, you know. 
or two times ago, not the most recent one, but this right. is back. They made it Avery Fisher Hall before David Geffen. Now it's the what's the third one now? I can't keep yeah, track. Yeah, you know, yeah. whatever. And so we they did a, a big they did all the Mahler symphonies in October at Carnegie. So we did number two one week and we did eight the, the following week, you know, doing this as an undergrad. <laughs> Yeah. That's what Westminster did. You know, it's such a tragedy that whole, we won't go into that. that yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, but, um, you know, but that's what we did. We sang. We sang you know, rap, Jesse rap, Nora rap. was the soloist. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, what to say, you know? It's crazy. Yeah. But, 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 you know, both Mahler 2 and 8, you know, they've got low stuff, you know, and I had it, but um, it wasn't the. At least, and this is going. This is a, a distant memory. I'm sure it wasn't the all-pervading, expansive sound that I have now. Yeah. Um, and um, so that's so that's kind of how I see it has changed. You know. Yeah. So range-wise, not much change at all. Um, it's gotten lower. Yeah, it got lower. You know, I couldn't have done the Chesnikov um 20 years ago. Okay. You know, and I certainly couldn't have done the Benedict Sheehan, you know, yeah. Death, you know, maybe even <laughs> would the years. notes have would the notes have been there at all in a performance setting? Just uh, not, as, not as strong. Depends on the approach, but it, you know, they don't get called on very. <laughs> you know, no. You know, but then again, I've done you know Vespers with all, all sorts of group, and and um, and I'm a real, I'm, I'm a very much a purist. Well, it also depends on the size of the group. Um, about. If the composer didn't write it, don't do it. Yeah. You know, because they'll say, well, let's, let's double the octave here. You know, you can double octave. Right? No, no, because if he wanted that, he would have done it. He would have yeah. put that low C in if he wanted it. Yeah. But also, it takes away from that B flat. Totally. You know. Um, now, where was I going with that? Uh, I don't know. I've kind of lost that thought. He was saying... Um... I was asking how your boy, your low end had developed and changed. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Ha and having that to draw on. Um, I'm trying to think back to Shaw. Cause that's, that's goes back to ways. If I had, if I popped a low G, he, you know, he had some low C's and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, that, that came over time. And also as your voice gets lower. Yeah. So it does. It has, gra it has gradually, it has the low end has gradually. Yeah, gone down. Uh, it yeah. is gradual though; it's very slow. Yeah, you know, yeah. But just take care of it. Don't do you know? Yeah, shelf life is important. It to is. Me, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. Okay, so before we get onto the Patreon questions, I wanted to get just like a few, just like some wisdom from you to to bases out there, young bases. Like what? What's just some just big big advice for the young bases out there be patient <laughs> that's a great one be patient it's you know it rome wasn't <laughs> built in a day and um, don't push the voice too hard too soon yep you know um unless you have such a personality that you, you know you got to go for broke and you know but but even so um yeah, be patient. I'd say stay in your lane. That's my that's exactly. My stay in Don't your lane. try to do repertoire that you shouldn't be doing, and and it's it's e it's easy to get sucked in. Yeah, people saying, "Oh, if you do this, you can do this now." And blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's countless stories of that. You know, and um, yeah, and it's also about the music. It's not about you. Yeah, and and do your homework. Yeah, show up prepared. Show up prepared. <clears throat> know what the piece is about. Yeah, uh, it, it does drive me a little crazy when I, I'm not going to name any names or anything. No, no. <laughs> but no, but like, in, 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 um, the times I've done the vespers, and they don't know the translation. You got to know the translation. The conductor needs to know the translation. The yes. singers need to know the translation. It's not just notes and dynamics. And vowels on a page, yeah. It's you're communicating, and and mm -hmm. that's that was that's mm -hmm. the that's that's where that's the genesis for the piece coming into existence in the first place. Any piece, right? You yeah. know, 
And so do that. Um, I and, and in terms of one thing that's been really a revelation to me um, is, you know, I through Benedict, she and uh, started singing some Orthodox liturgies. Singing a real vespers. Oh, this is how this piece works. Mm. This is this is this this is the seedbed from which this piece comes from. Yeah, you know, this is why this text is here, and this text is here, and this text is here, and the, and and how it all fits together. So it you know it it, it illumines your you know mm. how you perform it. Well, it's you like know? no, it's like knowing the whole opera to sing one of the arias. Exactly. Or knowing the whole role, especially knowing the whole role to sing one of the arias. And then also kind of knowing the composer's journey. It helps. Yeah. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I, there's always more I can do, one can do, but just um, kind of know what, you know, what, what was the soil that this piece came out of, not just in terms yeah. of a religious, but, you know, um, what was going on in the climate, you know? Um, yeah. You know, and that type of thing. So that's that's kind of wonderful. But, but, but the, also in terms of musical, it's the these are Mr. Shaw things. Um, when you're preparing a thing, and this is a really a choral thing, get all he he had an analogy when we would do all these things. You know, and it drove us nuts. You know, we would you know uh, uh, get the you know no, the notes on a on a neutral syllable, the the, the text and you know speaking in rhythm. All of those things, taking the whole, he had an analogy of you take the whole rose window apart, polish each piece of glass and put it back together. And then you can see what the window is about. Nice. You know, nice, and yeah. so, so, so um, you know, it's you know, all in the prep. And, yeah. um, but then also um, then in the moment you, you have the, you have the, the right to, um, to, Deliver it, you know. You've earned it, you know. Um, and also, you know, your your perspectives on things evolve. You know, when you're young, you're just, you know, just a young stallion. You yeah. can't wait to run out of the gate, you know. Yeah. And, and you have to have some of that hood spot, you know. Of course, yeah. you know. And um, yeah, you got to have that drive, but also, is, but also take care of yourself. Yeah, that's some so, great advice. Um, not pushing. The, I think the first thing you mentioned was you'd be patient, right? Right. I get I get all these young these young bases who you know they're they're undergrads and they're already and you know their voice teachers too will will apparently you know be labeling them as like a Verdi baritone or this is what you're going to be and I'm like you don't need you a you only need that specific kind of stuff if you go into like the professional opera world. It's the only time you need to be that specific with a voice type, you know, like a a lyric based baritone or whatever. Um, cause it's, it's for that repertoire, but also, uh, B you got to like sing what's comfortable and just wait and see what happens. Because some people like me, I was, I was very much a, a baritone in high school. Like there was yeah. no, there really wasn't any bass in my voice. And then it just, it just went down and has continued going down and it's become yeah. what it is now. But there are other people who, who start out as, you know, basses in, and then it goes up and then it goes up. Yeah. You can do the same training and like mm -hmm. something different happens. So you just can't predict no. until you get much, much later, much further along. You know, there's a wiring that is in you, you know, yeah. and it's going to reveal itself in, you know, in due course, you know. Exactly. And, um, exactly. And so just be just that's the way it is. You know, you can't make yourself into something that you're not. Do what feels good. Do what feels right. Yeah. Because what, what's good for your voice will always feel right even if your technique's not that great you can tell what's a good piece for your voice and what's not a good piece for your voice yeah you know at least it, you should be singing at present right yeah and there's gonna be music that you're not gonna be able to sing you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna be it's gonna be fine for you at one point and then yeah. no i've kind of grown past that yep you know and that's okay um also um and mr shaw taught us this too and christine will tell you this you know the musicianship piece the ensemble piece, the awareness piece of it all, you know, at, yes. it's a community thing. Totally. And, um, and, and then the humility piece too, you know, yeah, yeah. that was one thing that the, the, the conductors that are the, I think the greatest are the ones that 
you know, they don't, they're not up there just because it's them. Yeah. You know, Mr. Shaw and the, uh, you know, he, it was never about him. You know, to take a, whenever he, you know, how many thousands, how many thousands of times he did the B minor mass. You know, he took it on tour across the United States, for mm. instance. Mm-hmm. You know, and then always coming back to it and thinking afresh of a clean score or whatever, yeah. and just think and, and, and just discovering new things and all that, just always being open to that. You know, that's just yeah. part of the wonder awesome. of it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Let's get into some patron and, and young bass singer questions. Oh boy. Here we go. Um, listen, well, we've, we've kind of, we've kind of talked about, a couple of these, but so you can just give kind of a, a, a wrap up answer, but this is from Melinda. And she says, were you involved in music before your voice changed or did you find it through that? Oh no, I, I was, I was always involved with music. I knew when I was in first kindergarten, first grade, when the piano came, I was homesick. I was home. I, I had a, I don't know, some sort of bug. Yeah. The piano arrived and delivered it. And I found um, middle C on the piano. And then I found the next C down and I found a C major chord and I went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I just like, I, that was, I, oh yeah, I always knew. It was done. You're just over. It was yeah. done. I was done. I was <laughs> Forget done. it. <laughs> and I sang all the way as a kid. I, did, I I grew up in a little country church, you know, didn't know that the boy choirs existed or anything. Yeah. You know, we, were far, we, were, we were simple farm folk, you know. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, I just knew I found my spot. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. All right. This is from Isaac. This is another one we've kind of talked about. Um, he he asks, "At what age did your voice finally stop dropping?" Ha 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 ha. <laughs> oh, I never quite thought of it that way because uh, it's still kind of dropping. Well, it kind of is, you know. <laughs> but but what was so? I guess let's. What was that time period when you went from the boy soprano to the the super low bass? Like, did, was that literally overnight, or was it? It was. Well, uh, the the thing was, I. I I don't, I guess in a way it might've been, um, but you know, I sang a top, as I said, I sang a top C at eighth grade graduation. Yeah. At the end of, uh, and, and then I, you know, I wanted to, I, I couldn't wait to get, I wanted to be in the, the, the choir at high school, went to their concert, heard the freshman choir and, <laughs> you know, they're freshmen, eh, you know, and, um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, and I didn't want to be in a glee club, you know, what's that? Yeah. That's the kind of, I don't know. No, not for your voice, especially. Not, you know, it sounded kind of like, oh, they're just kind of waiting in the wings, you know, but I yeah. get why they, and, and everybody, you know, the singing was a different thing then. But I went to you know, the, the the main choir concert and, I, and I've and i got perfect pitch, so I can, you know, I can. Oh, okay. You know, okay. You know, and, um, and I thought everybody had that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can nope. tell red from blue. Can't you tell a C from a D? <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's obvious. Come on. <laughs> you know. And I remember I was I was listening. I thought, well, if I can figure out what ba- what the no- what the notes are that the bass are singing, you know, I, I might have a chance. So they sang. I think that I, I I think it was like a low E or an F. And I thought, well, yeah. if I have a low E or an F, I might be able to get into this choir. You know. Yeah. So I don't know if I kind of triggered something in my my <laughs> brain or something, and it went boing, you know. But um, and then yeah. it just just down down. Okay, down, we're down, gonna down. get you ready for this, you know. <laughs> and I got in, you know, it was fine. But. You had that low F plus another octave. <laughs> well, not quite, you know. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I really don't know what I had mm-hmm. totally as uh, through high school. I know I had Fs and Es. Yeah, I don't really. It's so far long ago. I just. I was just happy to be in the choir. What would have been? What would have been like a usable, like reliable low note for you at that time? O oh, F, E. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh yeah, that's wild. Oh yeah, because I had a solo. I remember this. Um, it was um, every time I feel the spirit, and I go da 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 that's great yeah okay um this scared is from to death oh i was so scared to death oh i'm sure Being out in the front of the stage talk about stage fright yeah well then yeah especially before your that, that was actually so i was a ta at university of southern california where i did my right. master's so i taught a bunch of I, I taught like basic voice science i taught a class and i taught um voice lessons to non-music majors and uh-huh. um 
Yes. Yeah, st- stage fright, you know, my biggest advice is you just have to do it. Like you just have to get in front of people and sing. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get, period. It's like learning to swim. <laughs> yeah. Also how prepared you are. Uh, yes. That's another, especially like for me, yes. I will, I will, I will be prepared to avoid that feeling, you know? And also when you're, you have to practice performing. Totally. You know, you just can't like sing it, sing or play something and you get to a spot and go back and fix it right then. No, you've got to start from the beginning cold and just do it. Do it. Yeah. Because that's when the nerves pop in. Yeah, absolutely. No, more no. good advice. More good advice there for young singers. Yeah. Um, all right. So these are just like usernames from people on this Discord server. So this is Base Crispies. And uh, he asked, do, do you see Octavism as a growing or dying art form? Um, I think it's picked up because of this music that kind of gotten, you know, um, this kind of had a renaissance, you know, and it kind of started with Mr. Shaw and do it here in this country. Um, that Vesper's recording kind of made a splash. Um, also there's kind of the freak factor of it, you know, and yeah. people novelties. I feel like low bases have gotten more attention in the last decade. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know? And also I, th- Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Growing art form. I, I agree. I agree. And People also are- that, you know, the, 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 there's composers writing for us, you know, like Benedict and Kurt That's Sander awesome. and, you know, and um, those are yeah. two Benedict in particular. And there's more rap, more rap coming out for. Yeah. You know, and there's stuff that's coming out from like, like the Talbot, you know, there's a low A in the second bar. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. <laughs> it's really it's really check it out online this piece it's path of miracles it's brilliant it's and not not, not because of you know this cool stuff for me but it's a incredibly well well written yeah. in terms of textures is he gets awesome. a lot of layers going you know and it's very engaging oh it's really it's really cool it's so funny whenever you sing a low note like during this interview the, the mic just like Oh really? <laughs> rejects it because I think it it just like you can't just it. like yeah because <clears throat> yeah. I'm, I'm sure your speaking voice is loud too. But you know when if you know how to sing and you tap into the technique, it's like you've got a speaker on the back of your head, you know. Yeah. So it just like immediately overloads us even on a low A or like the low G's you're demonstrating earlier. It's like you hear it for a split second and it goes nope. <laughs> I, you know, so I I kind of have have this <laughs> wish that I could have like an out of body experience sometime to hear myself sing because I just kind of do it. Yeah. You know? That here at the cathedral where I've been for the past year, I'm, and I'm an organist too. That's kind of why I'm here. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. And but they had me do the Zlenukov, um piece on Good Friday, and the organ here is so loud. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so loud. And so I did my thing, you know. And, I, and, and this, this piece that I sang, you know, the pedal division on this will just mow you off, <laughs> you know. And yeah. then I, there's a low C in this piece, and the guy who's an organist who's out in the congregation, he said, "I've been listening to this organ for thirty, you know, forty years." Uh, and then you sang, and you completely, you know, and I, it wasn't a piece with the organ. He said, "But the room couldn't, you know, it was. I've never heard anything that carry so well." Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're, it, it sounds like from what I've heard, and you know, the, the, this is revealed in that Oasis with those years recording. I mean, it sounds like your voice really does open up more. Mm-hmm. around like a low C and beyond. It's crazy. Yeah, I, feel, it, I feel like I'm a big pipe, you know, yeah. and and just kind of let that resonance. Yeah, you know, like the human pipe organ. You really are. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, Mr. Shaw said, I want you to sound like you're, you're a, you know, you're kind of at the bottom of, of a deep well, a big <laughs> pipe, you know. All right, like, I got it. Yeah, but also that pipe goes vertical. Consistency. Yeah. Top to bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. This is from Pumpernickel. Um, who influenced you most as a singer? As a singer or musician? He mm-hmm. says singer, but I think a singer. But I think uh yeah, feel free to answer both if they're different. Uh I different, you know. um hmm. I can't say there is a a bass that influenced me. I can say that 
a, a singer. You know, I I love listening to elegant, artful singing. Yeah, like a Janet Baker, mm-hmm. um, um, or a, a singer that communicates. Who do I listen to? I you know I listen to a lot more female singers than I do male singers. Not that I've listened to it, but I mm. just. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe it's just a thing. I don't. But um, um, I and maybe it's because of the repertoire. I'm not drawn to it as much. You know, like um, I like um, uh, you know, uh, it's just, mm, oftentimes the the bass repertoire is all roar, you know, yeah, yeah, roar, 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 you know. <laughs> And I'd much rather listen to Janet Baker sing El Garcia pictures. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, or a, just a beautifully um, elegant or a Brahms song, or sure. you know, or just yeah. beautiful French or whatever. Just well, maybe as maybe as a musician, then that's a better a better question. Yeah, for you. you know, that's kind of you know, I, you know, her, um, you know, golden age singers. Um, Oh, I'm, I'm looking at my shelf here. You know, Jesse Norman. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that mouth, <laughs> huge mouth. Oh my gosh. You know, she, was a, she went to the University of Michigan. Did you know that? I didn't know that. No. Yes. And she never got an opera role. What? How, how, how is that possible? Hey, what? You know what? She probably had a huge voice and they probably thought she was pushing when that was just her voice. Or you know, They're like knows. we can't put you on the stage. That's, that's the story I was told. I I might be wrong, but so that gets out there. You know, somebody knows better. That's like Michael Jordan getting cut from the high school team. You know, uh, yeah, it's kind of like that. You know, <laughs> just but her sense and and I, I like, like Janet Baker too, or you know, her there's their musical sense of when to get when to really arrive yeah. at the destination of a piece. When to stretch a note, even, however microscopically, you know what's inside of a note, what's inside of a vowel, yeah, color, you know that's what instead of just um, now there was a yeah, I'm not really into I love Christine, <laughs> Turkey, but I'm really not into that rep, yeah, um, just never have been, you know, yeah, fair enough, that's um, yeah, I would just rather. I I I'm more of a, a uh, you know I I much rather go to a, a a voice recital where it's just the piano and the yeah. singer. Have you have you ever have you listened to any of like the great operatic basses of the 20th century, like Cesare Sieppi or yeah, Ezio yeah. Penzi or Samuel Ramey? Oh yeah, oh Samuel Ramey was amazing. You yeah. know, just amazing. My hero. You know, and I loved. Um, oh, I've got a recording. Kermal, I'm sure you've Pardon? heard. Of- Kurt Mall, I'm sure you've heard oh, of. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah, all of that. You know, just awesome. the the artistry, all of it. You yeah. know, just everything. And uh, yeah, I like that. And cool. they're not Very like. Cool. I don't like bull in the china shop singers, but I like the way they sing. I like. No, them. I mean they are elegant, elegant, yeah, just very elegant polished. Classy. There's a recording. It's not a bass. Well, it's a Thomas Hampson recording of him when he was really young doing um, Bach cantata arias. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And especially when he was young, he was oh really gosh. it was elegant singing. Phenomenal singing. Just really, you know, uh Truly. just contoured and um young. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. There we go. Um, okay, and then last question. This is from Count Alron. <laughs> okay. Actually, I know this. This is his name's Aaron. I know Aaron. He he's a young opera singer. Okay. Um but this would be in the context of of choir, surely. What are your tips for blending? Um, Mr. Shaw had a line, and he was always on us. And I and he, and he kind of made Christine Gerke cry once. <laughs> was he and Christine got along, so they just loved each other, you know. But um, it was when her voice was evolved. We you sing within the sleeve of the sound. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So you know now, slightly modifying every little bit yes. to just fit. Yes, fit. And he um, was you know the way he would warm up our the choir 
And um, it was all about this. You're in, this, you're part of the whole, you know, and, yeah. and it was kind of funny. She was kind of singing out a little bit. And he was going around and, you know, he, he said, no, no, no. You know, that, that, that. <laughs> if you ever have a chance, PBS did a, 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 a part of their American Masters series. There is a one devoted to him exclusively. Okay. Okay. And it's, it's yeah, it's it's really phenomenal. It was when they awesome. were when he it was when he was turning a hundred. Okay, you know, yeah. it's really phenomenal. But there's so much wisdom in there, and um, but just singing the sleeve of the sound, and and um, and and it's about the beauty of it, you know. Yeah, it's not about you. It's not about you. Yeah, you know? and um, you know, so yeah, awesome, grateful. So awesome. there you are. Well, Glenn, thank you so, so, so much for coming on the YouTube channel and the podcast. I'm sure people are going to get a lot of value and enjoyment. And uh, all the all the music nerds out there will will enjoy us harping on about technique and blending and, and repertoire and stuff. So yeah. I think people are really going to enjoy it. So thanks so much. Yeah. And just take a minute. And any, any final words you want to give to the audience, please go uh, Yeah, um, um, I just feel... Um, I, you know, kind of at this chapter in my life, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and, and, um, um, just looking in the rear view mirror, seeing how, um, one thing leads to another, you know, and I keep coming back to the rock on and off Vespers, but that has been my barometer. You're not just vocally, but just how one thing has led to another and another and another, and another, like I just, this past week um week or so i got a invitation to do to go to south africa because of this amazing there's, there's a big i don't know i guess they're equivalent of um, acda or something the big choral thing and, then, and i guess everybody in south africa sings i hear i don't know and they want me they're doing the vespers they want me they're bringing me in they're working on bringing me in and doing some master classes and talking about singing and vocal techniques and coaching and which is kind of an area i haven't done a lot of you know in terms yeah. of like master class and kind of saying the fix your valve here you know yeah but, but you thought um, you've thought a lot about it within your own voice yeah. so yeah so I, I just respond to what like I, one thing i did as a as a church musician you know i as a choir trainer particularly with well just boys and girls but particularly with trouble boys you know just kind of finding that channel and also coaching yeah you know um my staff singers that i had you know and just kind of the the basic musical stuff you know yeah. and um, but also one oh, one thing that you, did you know the vespers was written for men and boys no yeah, <laughs> I did not know that. It was written for men and boys. And this is going to, uh, and I, when I did it with John Scott at St. Thomas, I, I don't, I, you know, we can get into all sorts of, and it's probably not going to be <laughs> the, the right thing to say at this point because of all the stuff that's going on in the world. You know, you can pick what you want to be and all that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. But I found um, my, my, there was something physiologically that my voice i found was easier to sing it remembered what it was like in a way to be a boy treble interesting not that i was trying to imitate that but it was yeah. like there was a channel in their sound because they, they were in their prime you know yeah yeah and there's a before their voice changes there's a ping to their voice yeah really well just you know there's um and I loved working with boys and having them to grow into that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I could always tell, okay, we're this is the last semester, you know, <laughs> it's on the <laughs> horizon. But just there was something um, um in in the cells of my, you know, physiologically and my in the voice that it kind of maybe it was because of the overtones that I was creating or that we created at the lower end that was that had evolved out of what they're doing at the top end. Kind of interesting. That's fascinating. It'd be kind of fascinating to, to, to kind of explore that. I don't know. Yeah, it's really not, the politic, not, the, not the correct thing to do these days. You know? <laughs> that, no, that's that's fascinating, though. Yeah. Uh, and I found it was easier in, in a lot of ways. And not just in that, that repertoire. Um, you know, going to 
you know, other other national rep, you know, English stuff or whatever, you know. Um, yeah. So there's that. But um, there was something else I wanted to kind of say. Just to, oh, how everything has led to another thing, you know, and how yeah. um, my experience with um, singing liturgies or whatever has illumined, and the right person coming, you know, like I, I wasn't meant to sing, like if you're an opera singer. You're not yeah. meant to sing <clears throat> a certain role until you're like 45, yeah. you know, yeah. or whatever. I wasn't meant to sing certain pieces until they came into my path. Yeah. You know, be patient. Once again, be patient, be, be patient, you know, and also, yeah. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah. This so. has been, this has been an absolute pleasure. Really, really enjoyed speaking with you. So thank you again. And oh, I will honor. Thank you. I guess I'm kind of known for what I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, most most definitely. Get, you know, it's kind of funny the messages I get. You know. Yeah. No, I was like, I want to speak with a basso profundo, Glenn Miller. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get him on the channel. You know. You know. So so, you. so, so let me know when it goes out. So I will. Uh, I'll keep you. I'll keep you fully updated on everything. Yeah, just a pleasure, and thank you for joining. You have. You're, you're going to be. Where, you're going to. Where, where are you going for your opera I'll, residence? I will be. So right now I'm doing a program in Santa Barbara called Music uh -huh. Academy of the West. We're doing a lot of oh, yeah. some other chamber, maybe for a great program. Great program. Yeah, I've heard of it. And then um, I might even have some staff, some staff singers that have ended up there. At some probably point. a lot of a lot of really there are a lot of famous opera singers that have gone through this program. Yeah. And wonderful instrumentalists of all kinds. Did Manya do this? I can't remember. I wouldn't be surprised. It's like yeah. a, it's like one he, of those. Really oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. When we did the Vaughn Williams <laughs> mystical songs. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. And then I'll be with Arizona Opera from basically late August through next May. Right. Yeah. Singing, that's a, bunch of, singing a bunch of stuff with them. Yeah. Right. Anyway, great talking cool to them. you. And right, uh, you. I'll, I'll keep you posted on all this. And uh, I'm definitely going to come see you live at some point. We'll, we can be in touch and we'll, we'll yeah, figure well, that out. Yeah, come to South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to give me on that, on that. No, if you ever get a chance to hear Clarion in New York, okay, that is, and check out the recordings of that. You know, will do. Yeah, so all right, wonderful, but great thanks. speaking with you. Take care, Have Take care, care Glenn. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye.